It is now 2020. Like, how did this happen? Who authorized it? And what have I done with my life? <sighs> I mean, it only feels like yesterday that I was graduating from university. So I'm just going through the socials the other night and I see everyone's doing this like 10 year challenge thing. And so I'm like, yeah, I'll have a bit of that. So I go to my photos and I find this absolute corker from 2010. I mean, look at this, I'll throw it up on the screen right now. There you go, there I am, 2010, not care in the world. <sighs> I look so young. Yeah, let's go through the background and let's, uh, let's see if we can point out some stuff. So you may have noticed, I don't actually wear glasses, but it was a big thing at the time, especially if you lived in the UK, that you would go like 3D cinemas were like the new thing, they were gonna be like the best ever invention. It really didn't really take off. I think it was kind of pointless, but the, the habit was that you, you kind of just didn't bother returning the glasses and then you would wear them on nights out and things as well and it just became like the weirdest fad but yeah still have them somewhere technically it's not stealing because I did pay extra for the ticket you can tell this was taken in 2010 by the amount of DVDs there are in the background but Leon Leon that's a great film I had some great film taste Re Reservoir Dogs sure yeah brilliant and there I am holding the world's finest rock and roll rebellious whiskey. And I say whiskey in the loosest sense because it's technically a bourbon. I've just noticed now, just below the bottle, there is those festival wristbands that you'll never take off ever again. And we'll have to see if I've taken them off or not. Ah, uh, there's the quite essential rave glasses that you had to wear to the rave. I think those are the only ones to ever survive. I think all the rest of my ones got broken. Now that, that is a sign that says these doors are alarmed. There's probably a story behind that, but I can't remember. Okay, so there in all his glory is Past Paul. We're gonna name him Past Paul. So I had nothing better to do on New Year's Eve and I was like, sod it, I'm home anyway. So here we go. We got out the camera and it's really hard because technology's come a long way, the dynamics and everything like that. So I got it as close as I could. But uh Me. Present Paul. Present Paul's into much better whiskey, he's found spirituality, and he likes clay pigeon shooting, and has subscribed to a streaming service of many, because he no longer needs his films. I mean, as I look at these two images side by side, I can see my past and my, my now present, and I can actually see how much and how far I've come. I mean, like, let's just break it down. Back then, I really didn't care, I had no motivation, I had no ambition, I had no drive. And these are the things that you can't just pick up and buy at Tesco. You have to actually acquire them somehow. And lucky enough for me, I found someone who installed a little bit of this in me to push me in the right direction, which is all good. But this guy's facial expression, if he knew how far and what the things he's about to do in 10 years, I... <laughs> Past Paul would duck out, I think. He would he'd be like, nah, mate, uh, I'm going to go play Xbox. You know, 2019 me is very different. Like, I'm like, well, how do I do coding? How do I do this? How do I do that? What, what are you doing that makes you better than me? What are you reading? What are you, what are you studying? Like, how can I be better? Let's kickstart this journey off then. Kind of embarrassingly, but more I sucked up my pride and I said, yeah, sure, I'm going to put it out there. And I went back to college and studied accounting and bookkeeping, which I did really well at. And then I applied for this uh, big blue chip company and it was kind of nerve wracking because I've only done like, you know, menial work and tasks like, you know, theme park operator and, you know, hotel general assistant things, you know, very low skill jobs. And then they were like, well, we see you've got an accounting qualification. We've, we'd like to interview you, blah, 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 blah. come on in. And I got the job, did very well. As you can see, really bad mistake on the goatee. Look at, ah, oh, that is disgusting. And the hair, oh, good tan though. Anyway, things were going really well until 2013. That was a horrid year. In the beginning of 2013, I had a really bad breakup. Things at work had like kind of plateaued and stagnated and, you know, I wasn't really moving anywhere with my career as such and so, I kind of felt a bit down about that, but then worst of all, 
my mum's condition uh, got really bad and it was I don't even want to talk about it it got it it was horrid and I was just not winning on any front anymore my mum's much better by the way now we have a care team and everything so there's nothing to worry about on that front and it was like I just hit this brick wall of that's it like you tried you got your qualification you got your job and that's it that's it that's, that's you done now but then I had my Les Brown enough is enough moment like uh, like it's 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 only a moment that you can describe in your life when you've actually had enough and that's it enough is enough like no more taking it no more doing it you're gonna do something about it you're gonna get up and go you're gonna I don't know lose a stone or you're gonna save money and you're gonna go traveling or you're gonna get that degree like I was like I'm gonna to prove to the world I am a better person literally the next day I filled out a university application form for a last-minute place at Birkbeck and I did not think I was gonna get in lo and behold they accepted me so I would study in the evenings I worked for the blue chip company in the background however as I continued my course so I decided I wanted more from the company and you know I wanted a better position because I was training harder now and then they said no so I said well okay fine I quit you know going into 2014 I was going to be jobless but I was fine with that cause it was a choice and, and as my manager said to me good luck and I was gonna need it so 2014, this is a pivotal year. This is where it could all go tits up or absolute success from here on out. I mean, this this is it. This is the linchpin of a year. Obviously, I needed an income to go to university. And if I didn't have an income, I couldn't go to university. Now, this let me in a bit of a conundrum because when I went to interviews and I said, hey, hire me. And then they'd read uh, like five lines down and be like, oh, you're still at university. I'm like, yeah. And they're like, well, sorry, we can't employ you because you're in university it's just against our policy which obviously means that I lost my income there so I was in a catch-22 and I have no idea what to do at this point I'm literally about three months away in savings from going completely bankrupt and having to leave university and go back into the world of work with you know just utterly ashamed and then I turn on my TV and I see that these floods have happened in my local area which is really bad and I thought well you know I could fill out another pointless application or I could actually pull my finger out and go help these people and that's what I did so then I spent the next month basically digging sandbags, delivering medication helping people get out of the flooded area and in the aftermath I went around and I, I cleared up and helped people like just take out like dirty carpets and you know just basic tasks, menial tasks that people needed done I didn't charge anyone, even though I was very unemployed, did not charge anyone. I did accept a bottle of wine as a thank you, but that was it. But then I had a thought, well, if they were willing to pay me to do menial stuff, maybe I could just do small jobs like, you know, gardening or maybe even flat pack furniture assembly. I mean, no one likes assembling flat pack furniture apart from me. And then maybe I could, maybe I could train to get a skill in plastering and then people could pay me to do things they don't want to do and I could make a living and go to university and my thing would be solved I mean wouldn't that be great so I went home and I literally drew up this business plan yes that's my office as it was that is a business plan right there do you think I could enter that for the apprentice so I went ahead with my business plan, I started doing like little tasks around the house, like flat pack, as you saw, flat pack furniture, gardening and things like that, just little things in the local community. And then I went and got trained uh, in plastering at Silver Trowel, where I continue to this day to be the poster child on their website. <laughs> Which is ridiculous. <laughs> but I love it. And then I decided to open a business, and I literally called it The Hover Business. I love it because it's so basic this image but you know it needed to be upgraded and then that swiftly became Hover Enterprises no odd job too small also during this random working self-employed and going to university I became an extra most notably I was the king of Romania in the crown <laughs> which uh, 
which is, I'm not even kidding. Uh, you can look at this on Netflix. I always wanted to be at the back. No, they stuck me in the front. Like, literally in the front. So I'm gonna try and wrap this up really fast. Uh, so back to my studies at university. It was going really well. I mean, those are actual theories on macroeconomics. Uh, if you've ever studied that, then you'll know what's on the board. And then my business was going really well because I've got a big shiny van. Look how big that smile is on my face. Look, oh, I miss that van. It had cruise control, parking and everything. Oh, I wish I kept it now. Damn it. Yeah, so everything was going well. And then I graduated with the help of some lovely people around me. Yep, that guy graduated. Uh, so after university, I decided, hey, I'm too old to be working up the ladder. Why don't I start at the top of the ladder and then fall down and get rejected until I find my level? Which I found working on major films for different film studios. Now obviously I can't go into any more detail than that. So I've been doing this since the end of 2017 and it's been amazing. Uh, honestly, it's been fantastic. People I've met, the work I do and the things I see phenomenal i mean it's really special to be in this group and yeah i mean that kind of ends what happened in the decade and that is how we get to present paul here he's come so far from past paul and i hate to talk about like third person but i've come i hate to big myself up but like it's just been i hate to blow my own trumpet here but honestly present paul has come so far from past Paul it's like um, it's like two different it's like I'm, I know it's the same person in both the photos but they are two very different people no hope in hell would anyone be betting on past Paul to become present Paul not even I would not hope in hell uh, if you want to check out like my 20s there's a video here somewhere I mean it'll just prove my point I think that's the brilliant thing about life that people do change and change is possible and you're definitely not the same person. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, go not just aesthetically, but like the person underneath. Uh, I think that's what I'm trying to prove here that I may look the same ish with a bit more wear and tear on past on present ball, but they are two very different people. But now here comes the question. What on earth am I going to look like in 10 years? Will I still have those glasses and the shirt? I mean, will I still be into whiskey? Well, who knows? And I think that's the beauty, as well as the future, is you don't know who you're gonna become. Thank you for watching, and I'm wishing you a happy 2020 and beyond. Let's not just think about what's happening this year. Let's think about where we wanna be in like 10, 20 years down the line and make choices now that will make for a better future. Right. Have a great day, guys. Bye. Oh, this got deep for just a 10-year challenge thing.